Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Richard Boyd, CEO of Invisius. Invisius is developing a breakthrough coating technology to improve the outcomes of patients on dialysis and other extracorporeal treatments. The human immune system is incredibly good at spotting foreign objects. Implanted medical devices, transplanted organs and cells can be compromised by the foreign body response kicked off by the immune system. So unwanted blood clots form in heart valves and catheters, restenosis blocks up stents, transplanted organs suffer rejection and emerging cellular therapies may be cleared away by the recipient's immune system before delivering the intended therapeutic effect. Bioincompatibility remains a challenge and a source of complications for patients. Invisius is taking a radically new approach to biocompatibility. Shown on the left is a Streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria. Streptococcus pneumoniae is the leading cause of bacterial meningitis, which kills millions of people every year. What makes Streptococcus such a successful pathogen is an invisibility cloak which allows it to evade the human immune system and avoid destruction. Invisius has identified the invisibility cloak, a protein on the cell surface, and have worked out and patented its mechanism of action. And we're using that protein as a coating technology to achieve a breakthrough in the biocompatibility of devices and implants. This coating technology has many potential application areas, but our target indications are the extracorporeal treatments shown on this slide. Our first indication is dialysis, which is performed in dialysis clinics and increasingly in the home to replace kidney function in patients with end-stage renal disease. The addressable worldwide uh, market for our product is estimated to be worth $2.4 billion. Subsequent indications are continuous renal replacement and ECMO, which are used in intensive care to support patients with weakened kidney and heart lung functions, where the estimated addressable worldwide market for our product is 0.7 billion. And finally, cardiopulmonary bypass and ECMO, sorry, and finally, uh, cardi cardiopulmonary bypass, which is used to replace the heart and lung function of patients undergoing open heart surgery, where the market for our product is worth another 0.6 billion. What these treatments all have in common is that they involve the circulation of the patient's entire blood supply through a machine for hours or even days on end. A machine which the immune system sees as a very large foreign body to be disposed of. That foreign body response contributes to a range of serious complications and costs which our product will address. These are the major players supplying equipment into these extracorporeal treatment markets and are the most likely source of a, of a future exit. They tend to split between the companies providing renal support, such as Baxter, Fresenius, Nipro and Nikiso, and those providing heart-lung support such as Medtronic, Mackay, Terumo and Levanova. Our product will actually add value to these companies' products rather than replace them. So we're looking to cooperate with these companies rather than compete directly with them. And furthermore, we're developing our product to be compatible with any manufacturer's products. In this way, we keep our options open and maximize the number of potential acquirers. This is actually a slide from an investor presentation given by Baxter, world number two in the dialysis market, which explains why this is such an attractive market for Invisius. Firstly, the dialysis market is very large. There are about 3 million patients currently on dialysis, and this number is growing at 6% a year, partly due to the rise in chronic kidney disease and partly due to the increasing access to treatment for the 4 million or so untreated patients. But secondly, as Baxter points out, 
there has been limited innovation in the market for the last 25 years, while the current therapies continue to result in unacceptable patient outcomes. So this is a market that is crying out for innovation. Life expectancy on dialysis is slashed to just one third of normal and 50% of dialysis patients die from cardiovascular complications and the hospitalization required to manage their complications incurs a huge cost to healthcare systems. The problem is that the dialysis procedure itself damages the cardiovascular system. Patients typically have dialysis three times a week and a session lasts for four hours during which, during which the blood is continuously pumped from the patient's body and circulated through a filter shown on the far right there to remove excess fluid and toxins. Unfortunately, the immune system recognises the very large surface area of the filter as foreign and initiates an inflammatory response. The inflammatory molecules circulate back to the patient and damage the vasculature. Repeated damage from months or years of thrice weekly dialysis results in a hugely increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Because of this damage, the incidence of cardiovascular complications is very high for the average dialysis patient. But there's actually a subset of patients whose immune system is particularly sensitive to the dialysis procedure. And we refer to these patients as having angry blood. And they represent about 20% of the total. Recent research has shown that patients with so-called angry blood may have up to three times higher risk of a cardiovascular event than even the average dialysis patients. So we're looking to stratify and only treat the sensitive high-risk patients in the first instance. By maximizing the treatment effect, we can run smaller and shorter clinical trials and maximize the health economic benefits. The product we're developing is called the HGARD priming solution. This consists of a vial of the invisibility cloak, which is the protein copied from the Streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria. Before each and every dialysis session, the blood tubing and the filter are renewed and primed before the patient is hooked up to begin dialysis. Priming is the method by which saline or some other simple buffer solution is circulated through the tubing in the filter to remove air and any manufacturing residues. The HGARD priming solution is simply mixed with the existing priming liquid. During the priming procedure, the surfaces of the filter and the tubing get coated with the HGARD molecule, which then hides these surfaces from the patient's immune system. So as a result of priming with HGARD, the dialysis tubing and filter surface is coated with the HGARD molecule. As soon as the patient's blood starts to circulate, the molecule captures a protein in the blood called factor H. Factor H is basically an off switch for the immune system. And what's particularly unique about HGARD is that it changes the conformation of factor H, making it up to 10 times more active as an off switch. So what you end up with is a device surface decorated with the patient's own immune off switch in its most highly active form. The company spun out from research at Edinburgh University in April 2018 with half a million of investment from our lead investor Mercia. And with that investment we demonstrated proof of mechanism We've demonstrated feasibility with over 90% of uh, filter materials currently in use. We demonstrated manufacturability. We confirmed the class of the product as a class 3 device. Uh, we 
confirmed our preclinical and safety trial plans with the MHRA. Uh, we got our patent granted in the US and we're going to grant in Europe. And we also signed a memorandum of understanding with a major player in the, mech, in the ECMO and cardiopulmonary bypass space. We won a couple of awards along the way, uh, including being named as a FIAS 15 company by FIAS MedTech in 2019. Today I am delighted to announce that through its venture arm, Solvay is now one of our lead investors. For anyone who doesn't know Solvay, they are a global materials company with over 10 billion euro sales and, is, and they are a member of the CAC 40 index. Solvay's interest in Invisia stems from the fact that they are the market leading supplier of <coughs> material for manufacturing dialysis filters and they want to be at the forefront of the fusion of biotech and materials uh, that they see occurring in their markets. In September last year we raised 2.75 million pounds from uh, Mercia and Solvay with participation from Downing, Old College Capital and the Scottish Investment Bank. And we're using that investment to build our team to develop the manufacturing process, to perform, perform early toxicology testing, to perform ex vivo testing in human blood and you can do that without actually performing a human trial, to confirm our regulatory pathway with the FDA and to study the health economics and the reimbursement uh, for our product. And this is leading up to a Series A round of four to five million pounds at the end of this year, which will take us through a first-in-man clinical trial in a couple of years' time. We've recently hired a number of very experienced people to our board and our management team. Our new chairman is Eric Beard, Eric brings tremendous experience of all our target markets, having been president of Baxter's global dialysis business. But he's also held senior positions at Sorin Group, which is now Levanova. Dr. Sandra Neumann was a general manager at Baxter's renal business. And Sandra is also founder and CEO of Peripal, which is developing a patient aid for dialysis. Dr. Magnus Nicholson, our new COO, has led several public and private life science companies, including Viragen, Cytokine Pharma, and Acto Pharma. And we're very fortunate to have Professor Sandeep Mitra and Dr. Mark Seelan as clinical advisors. Sandeep is a world-renowned key opinion leader in the dialysis field, based in the Manchester Royal Infirmary. Mark is a leading researcher into the impact of the immune system during dialysis and is based in Groningen in the Netherlands. So in summary, Invisius has a breakthrough platform technology applicable in several large markets with significant unmet need. Dialysis is our first target market which is a very large and growing market which is crying out for innovation. We've confirmed our product as a class three medical device. We've demonstrated feasibility with over 90% of dialysis materials and components currently in use. We're stratifying patients to reduce the time and cost to market and increase the health economic value. We've signed a memorandum of understanding with a global player in a second market, ECMO and cardiopulmonary bypass. Our patent's been granted in the US and will be granted shortly in the EU. And finally, our strategy is to cooperate rather than be directly competitive with the companies in this space, providing an exit opportunity with many industry players. Many thanks for listening. <laughs>